the live. It just said it's starting soon. Okay, so now it actually is live. We are actually not live right now. So, so yes, you are. I want to welcome everyone to this show on tonight that I am so, um, so honored and so pleased to have a, a group of just beautiful ladies to join in on this conversation. And as we're getting ready, I'm going to ask, um, cause we want to give people some time to like roll in. Um, I get it's just two minutes after seven and um, to join us. But if you have not done so already, please like the RETV page on Facebook and you can follow them under Relationship Entertainment Television on YouTube as well as Instagram because we have somebody on here that is solely an Instagram person. So we want to make sure we give Angela some credit here. Um, she's not rolling on Facebook like the rest of us. So um, yes, yeah, so please like, please share. Um, we want to, again, you know, thank everyone for joining us. And I have Kiantha chilling out in the beautiful state of Washington. I have Tanya, who's in North Carolina. I have Hadia, who's here in Texas with me, who's actually celebrating her birthday, y'all. She was kind enough to come on for a bit. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. And then, but not least, we have Angie and Crystal, who are from my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, Lauren, we see you. So we're going to have quite a few people. People are giving you a shout out. Somebody say happy birthday to you, Hadia. Um, so yes. So tonight's topic, we are talking about... All oh, shades, all oh, textures. And I know that um, Hadia will probably have to leave us a lot sooner than everyone else. So Hadia, when I told you about the topic, what was going through your head when I asked you to come on for us to have this conversation in regards to um, So you normally when people ask me to be on shows and they give me a topic, it's, um, I'm thinking, okay, let's be political. Let's talk how shades go. Um, but coming from you, I know it came from a good place just to give my insight on all shades. And I was very excited about it because I literally had this conversation with someone else the other day about being a dark skinned woman. Um, and I don't know how far you want me to take it because you got your questions going on. So that's where it is there. So. Now go, go for it. We listen. I told you we're all in this together. Oh, we will okay. So, yes, um, so I had an insecurity when I was younger because I was a dark skinned girl in school. All of my friends were light skinned with the long hair and the pretty eyes. So they say most of them were contacts, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, you know, I thought, okay, I'm not pretty enough to be the cheerleader. I'm not pretty enough to be on the drill team. I'm a great dancer and so on and so forth. But um, I always had an insecurity about myself, about my skin tone. Um, I even went to my mom and said, why am I darker than everybody else in my family? Because everybody in my family is a fair skin color. They're not as dark as I am. Um, mm -hmm. She sat me down and, you know, explained that, you know, your black is beautiful, regardless of what you are, what, what, if you're lighter or darker, it doesn't matter. You are Hadia A. Frey at the time. Um, that's who you are. Don't worry about your skin color because your skin's color doesn't define who you are or who you're going to become when you get older as a kid. I have two daughters now, 14 and nine. Um, my nine-year-old does it all the time. She's like, I'm dark skin. What does that mean? Like these girls are lighter than me. Their hair is longer than mine. So when she gets her hair braided, she's always flipping her hair. And I'm like, child, what did you do? And she's like, well, my hair is not long enough. And I can't do this. And I can't do that. And I had to explain to her that, you know, it doesn't matter how much hair you have growing out your scalp. It's hair. It grows out of your scalp. It can grow fast. It can grow slow. It doesn't matter how light you are, how dark you are, because um, where she goes to school is predominantly white kids. Right. And so she thinks that they're privileged 
and they can do whatever they want because of their who they are. There and but you know, I just explained to her that's that's not the case. You who you are, God made you who you are, and you will continue to strive and do what you need to do for you. Don't worry about anybody else. She's mm -hmm. she's she's definitely a go getter for sure. Um, oh, yes. So, she definitely is. But, you know, I love my skin. I'm I'm black. I'm beautiful. I embrace it now. I used to be really shy because of that and because of the stigma behind dark skinned kids or girls anyway. So I'm not shy no though. Hey, I'm you, know. <laughs> you know, thank God for growth. Thank God for growth. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for growth. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, cause you know, like I said, I know you have to step off, but in any one of you can jump in after Hadia um, answers this question. Did you get those messages more like it was it from school or was it what you were watching on television? Like, where did you begin to like define your beauty? Like what was your marker? Um, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but the one person that I saw that was my skin tone in that category was Eartha Kitt. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> she was fiery. She was gorgeous. She was beautiful. And it was like, that's me. That's who I am. I can be that. I don't have to. Um, um, what's the word? Uh, I don't have to be shy in my skin. You know, does that make sense? I don't have to be shy in my skin because of my skin tone. I can be who I want to be, and people will still like me regardless if I'm light skin, blue eyes, green eyes. I can I can change my eye color now if I wanted to, with contacts, um, yeah. my hair tone, and so on and so forth. But um, you have the women that wanted to do the the bleaching of the skin, and yeah. you understand that that stuff it, it, in the future that's going to mess up your skin even deeper. The chemicals go even deeper. So seeing her and then seeing all the different models come out that were a darker tone you have that one model she was a heavy set model she was really really dark and she was a heavy set model i don't remember her name i probably should have looked this up before then but she also i think okay so we lost hadia just for a moment uh while we wait for her to con connect back with us. Crystal, I'm gonna ask you to talk about your experience, your journey into loving the skin that you're in, and even maybe some things that you've experienced being one of our lighter sisters. Well, my, my journey was very different. Um, it definitely was um, a very unique journey. I remember from you know elementary school, I would go to school. I went to a, um, it was a, a very diverse school. And um, I would get teased a lot by, and, and I lived in the, lived in 53206, which is one of the most urbanized, um, you know, areas in Milwaukee, you know. That's and, where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I was this high yellow girl from, you know, from the hood. Um, and so, I, you know, not a lot of girls look like me. Um, and I really didn't understand until I got, until I started going to school and things like that, that I was any different because my family, the way that my family is, you know, we, all of us are, you know, fair skinned or, you know, we, we have a wide array of, of, you know, complexions in my family. So I didn't really feel that until I got to school. And quite honestly, um, it was very hard for me. Um, I got teased a lot from, um, from African American people because I, you know, obviously I say I'm black, you know, that's all, that's what I know. And when I would get to school, I got teased quite a bit because no, you're a white girl. And I got called white girl. And that, um, you know, I, I took offense to that. And so I would come home and I would tell my mom, you know, they called me a white girl today. And then I would get told all of these catchy phrases that you go back to school and say, no, you tell them that black people come in all different color shapes and sizes. And I'm one of the, you know, the many colors and all of these different things. And so I had to learn these catchy phrases to be able to go back and have these comebacks with these girls. And some of it, you know, I ended up fighting a lot because of it. Um, my hair was pulled a lot. 
Um, so it was it, it was a very different journey. Um, very different. You know, I, I will say that they're also within the black community. We have kind of that stigma. I think that, um, you know, that that lighter skin means that you are treated better and things of that nature. But there is on the flip side, there's some things that we go through, too. Um, you know, not feeling as if, you know, because sometimes I walk into a room and it's like, OK, do they know I'm black? Are they going to know? Are they going to think I'm black enough or, you know, that type of thing? So there was a lot of that, especially from elementary to middle school. Um, not so much in high school, because by then I was kind of like, look, this is what it is. And this is who I am. And come yeah. on, get it. you know, I had developed very tough skin for it. Um, but, you know, it that, that that was probably the most difficult part. I remember one time somebody said to me and this was, you know, a black person. They had said to me, um, and they were introducing me to someone, and I heard them kind of talking over, like, you know, I, I had kind of turned my back a little bit, but they were having a conversation. And I think that the question must have been something along the lines of, is she good? Is she cool? You know, that type of thing. And they said, oh, you don't have to worry about Crystal. She's not light skin. And so then I, I kind of interjected myself back into the conversation and he said, said again, oh yeah, you know, she not light skinned. And I'm like, well, what, is, what do you mean by that? <laughs> like, what do you mean? I, I, I am light skinned, what are you talking about? And the mm -hmm. truth was, you know, to be light skinned is to be shady or yeah. you know, that type of thing. So you don't have to worry about Christy, she's not light skinned. And then when you think about maybe like the Drake song that he has and he says in his song, I'm light skinned, but I'm still a dark skinned nigga. That is a very real thing. Is that you know you're, you're light skinned, but do you act light skinned? You know what I'm saying. So my journey has been very different. Um, very different. Yeah. You know that's interesting. Now you, those of you that know me, know I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way back, long before any of us were thought of. And after I say this, Tweety, Kiantha, I want you to chime in. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm about to go back to history because for, for me to hear that, like to for them to try to take away from who you, not necessarily just who you are, but your skin, you, you know what I'm saying? As your skin complexion to say, she's not light skin when you in fact are. And like you said, to imply that you think you're better than, well, that comes from slavery. Yeah. So yeah. it has been transferred down from generation to generation to generation where somehow or another light-skinned people of color were somehow more intelligent mm -hmm. the elite there's this assumption that they are going to have they like they have more class and i'm somewhere in like in like we're so many different shades some people call me light-skinned i never looked at myself that way but i have that stigma as well having the length of hair and having the complexion but i'm amazed to hear that some somebody even in this day and time would okay. even say that say that she's good like i guess tweety did you grow up feeling any kind of way about your skin complexion and was there a rift in your family between you know because some people start there in their families between lighter and dark I would say no, not for not for my family. That that wasn't the case because my family is is primarily brown browner skinned uh, folks. So no, that didn't happen for me. But I do know that though the the truth about colorism is real, and I do know that people say things and have always said things like what she was mentioning. You know, if you're fair skin, you're prettier or you might be shady. Like there's all these stereotypes that are associated with our skin color. Things that we don't even have anything to do with. But I'll tell you, as black people, we perpetuate some of those stereotypes. Oh, we too. do. So yeah. when we look when we take an opportunity to meet somebody new and you kind of give them the little once over look based on, you know, you don't even know them yet. You haven't said a word. They haven't said a word. One of the things that you're looking at is you're you're being uh, conscious of color and things like that. And and so that exists and that's sad for to say, but it really, it really does exist. I don't think that I um, really recognized for myself that people felt differently about color until, believe it or not, 
um, I would say maybe 10, maybe a little bit over 10 years ago, I was actually in a relationship and it was someone who said to me after we, uh, after I made them available to industry, uh, that said, you know, I, I'm looking for somebody that's a red bone. And I thought, wait, what you trying to say? What are you saying? What is that saying? Because why would that even be anything that comes up, you know, skin tone or skin skin uh, color? Why is that important? And what is it that you have associated with a red bone? What do red bones do? You know, what what is this idea that we have for lighter women or darker women or the stereotypes that we perpetuate ourselves? And it's and it's many of them. And it's not just men. It's women who do it. It's everybody. It's, oh, yeah. And especially older folks. Really, okay. okay. Really. See, yeah. see, there you go. Don't you start yes. that. Because the thing is, I want to make sure that I, I wanted to, um, we have a question, not a question, okay. but it was a comment from one of our viewers. And I really want to read what she has to say, because I wanted to ask Hadia about this. Now, Hadia, I know that your dad is from Jamaica. Is your mom from Jamaica as well? No. She's not? Just from Odessa. Okay. So do you, do you have any like aunts? that are from the Caribbean as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. let me read what Cassandra um, commented. She said, I'm from the East Coast and I didn't know color until I came to the South. Since I'm from the Caribbean, I've also been told I'm not black. All shades are beautiful and until we make sure people understand that, then it will continue to perpetuate. I wanted to know, I wonder for me, because I've only lived in America, is this an America issue? Um, yes and no, because mm -hmm. people, when they look at me, I mean, they listen to how I speak. They go, okay, you, you, you talk. It's proper English, people. I don't talk right. I speak proper English. What was white? Only white people can speak proper. I don't understand that. But right. Um, and then they would immediately say, you're not American. I'm not. I was born in America. I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm. I'm. So you're you're islands. You're from the islands of somewhere. You're not American. You're not black. Yes, I am. I'm black. I'm not African American because I'm not an African. I'm black. But even if you go over to the Caribbean, they will say you're definitely not an islander, because of course you have the 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 language the language barrier over there um, and i haven't been over there too often so i don't know how it works but i know how it works for me in my home and my culture but they never say that i'm black they always say i'm not american i get it every time you're not american and and you're you're definitely not american one american black because you talk white and you're not american because for Jamaicans, they speak very proper. They enunciate. They speak proper. But everybody, people speak, speak proper. But they make it, you just have to hear Jamaican they speak. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not black. I'm, I'm not American when I get, I get it all. I never fail, ever. Well, Toya, can I throw a monkey wrench in the conversation? Of course. So when I hear people say all shades are beautiful, you know, all shades are beautiful. Yes, that is true, but not all people are beautiful. And I'm not talking about a physical beauty. I'm talking about internally. And yes. so you can be a fair skinned person or a very dark skinned person. If you are ugly acting, mm. you, you're not beautiful. We're not going to say that. <laughs> so, yeah. we, so, so let's make sure that we're clear about what we're actually talking about and where that beauty lies, because it should never really be connected to your your color anyway. That's, you know, really beauty shouldn't even be connected to anything physical. It, now that's, yeah. that's something Good. I have to think right. about. That's it's another really, conversation. Yeah, it's that's nothing another physical. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, then, yes. Hadia, what we're going to do, because I know you have to get somewhere for your birthday. Everybody that's watching, please tell our lovely Hadia Miller, happy birthday again. Thank you for happy spending. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I hope <laughs> that you be safe. And I'm sure we'll have more conversations. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we'll have Martina come on. Martina is coming next. And Hadia, I'll talk to you later. Thank you, dear. You have yeah. a wonderful evening. Having me. Of course. 
Wow. Yeah. Tanya, weigh in with what you've heard so far. Okay, first of all, this is very good, and I love to hear the different perspectives. Um, for me, I've never had an issue with skin tone. Um, some of the things my experiences have been where a, someone with a darker complexion, and I went through this a lot with my family growing up, um, where they felt that I was treated better than them because I was light skinned. Y'all see me, right? I've, I'm First of all, I'm not light, okay? I'm not. And secondly, why would they equate that to being treated better? I never understood that. Mm -hmm. um, my thing would be, oh, you're brown, and you have good hair. What are you mixed with? Mm -hmm. And that has, that has always irritated me, and it irritates me to this day because it's still something that's very prevalent. Um, I get excluded from natural hair uh, conversations to this day. I mean, it's to the point where I'm not chiming in on anything to ask about products or, any, you know, just things if you hear people talking and it's just like, oh, but you're, you're mixed. Your hair is curly. You just throw some water. And it's just like, if we're loving ourselves, you love yourself because you throw natural, why are we still doing this? You know what I mean? Good hair for me is healthy hair. So I'm just like, is your hair healthy? You keep it up. You keep it clean. You keep it trim. That's good hair for me. But there's still that stigma out there. And that's how a lot of us operate. And or that's the other thing. It's like, why do we have to be mixed with something mm -hmm. to be considered beautiful you know, or it, that, that's the that's silly. Let me say this. And then while I'm saying this, somebody has to make sure that you're if you're watching the show on your phone, you got to cut it down because we're getting feedback. So make sure we can only you're only listening in on your phone. I mean, the computer, if that's what you're on, because we're getting quite a bit of feedback. But let me say this. I remember in elementary school, third grade, girls being able to tell you how much percent Native American they were and how, like, you know, I'm 25 percent Native American. I'm, 13 percent why and i'm just like we yeah. barely can do division how do you know <laughs> that you're made of and i used to get that question you know are you mixed and i'm going to tell you all this and y'all can run in that part it is but it always baffled me it was like i had to be mixed in order to be beautiful exactly. like we you couldn't like black couldn't just stand alone you got to have something else in there to constitute A, your hair, B, your, your beauty, according to what everybody else are like. You got to be mixed with something. You can't keep it real quiet. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed is that it, it does. Some of the older generation is scary. Um, where my family is from, the small town in, in Missouri, it is about feedback. Um, it's a small town in Missouri, and I would go and visit and walk through the town, and people would say, you must be one of them James girls. And they equated a James girl to my skin complexion or lighter with the type of hair that we have. And that was the thing. It's like, get a James girl. And that's so silly. These were older men. Older men and men. You know, in their 50s and 60s when I was a young girl. But that was the thing. So you think about the conditioning that happens when you have these older people and you're a young, you're a young girl. They're conditioning younger children and then it keeps going. So it's, you know, that's amazing when we still see it now in women our age. Okay, we're going to try this again. I don't know where it's coming from with the feedback, but is everybody looking like on is everybody like do you have or is there anybody walking on their phone no so i don't know where the where the extra sound is coming from um but we're gonna keep on rolling it's nice to have you martina we got to give you a proper welcome because i know we're switching that <laughs> hey y'all hey, hey, and so we, I know Angie's been sitting there pretty quiet, and I know where um, I got to get ready to switch some people out. But Angie, I'm gonna have you come in a bit, and then we'll we'll go to Tina. 
as far as you know some you know look okay so angie and chris are cousins um and so crystal talked about her family you know has that complexion angie did you have any trouble in school because of your complexion because of the length of your hair uh, yeah, when I started school, I started in Pewaukee, so my dad worked out that way. I was born out there. It's when I had to go to MPS. Um, that's when I started getting the, well, what are you? What are you <laughs> with? Is your mom white? Is your dad white? Why are you so white? Um, I had girls that would be mean to me because they thought, um, I'm in middle, I'm in elementary school. I thought I was better than them. One girl wants to cut my hair because I have long hair. She literally wanted to cut my hair. I did not. I was like, this is crazy. So I got a defense mechanism all of, like starting in elementary school. So I did become the mean girl. Don't talk to me because you think I'm all that. Um, even in middle school, girls didn't like me my hair, I'm light, or she got an attitude. I kept one because I, I already knew that's what they felt. And so I remember when I was about to go to high school and I'm like, okay, I didn't want to have an issue with people. I didn't want anybody saying, oh, her hair is long. You know, I, so I cut my hair, literally. I cut it like it was a bob in the back. I'm like, okay. Being this new person, whatever, still, because of the texture of my hair. Oh, that's a wig. I her, her hair, she thinks she all that because my hair would like blow in the wind still. I, I mean, I can't help that. Blow it do, Angie. What you saying with blow in the wind? Blow in the wind, you know, like a <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help that stuff, you know? And it was still a problem. Oh, she thinks she all that. I'm like, dude, I have mm -hmm. short hair now. It's not even long. It's like this it was moving. It was moving. Yeah, dark girl hair don't supposed to move. Your hair was moving. <laughs> um, I'm not with y'all. <laughs> go in, go in. But it was, it was just always like she thinks she's all that. Um, she got an attitude. Now I did have an attitude, but that was me defending myself from dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, yeah, I do. Don't talk to me. It is not until I got to be an adult that I embrace myself because I used to be like, why am I so white? Because neither one of my parents are this white. <laughs> you know, I just did not understand. And you would get the name calling glowworm, light bright, you know, all white girl. I got tired of hearing that, but I had to learn to accept this is how God made me. Mm -hmm. yes. And, um, I tone down with the attitude and it's like, okay, I'm going to be me and you're just going to like me either for me or you not. It is what it is at this point. I guess I would have to say that's a narrow point mm -hmm. of view because apparently these people don't get out much. Mm -hmm. Truly. Because I've seen all shades of black women. Some be cool, some not so cool. And it had absolutely nothing to do with their complexion yeah and so I, I just like racism is taught no one's born a racist this whole issue with colors when within the black community yeah. that's taught when you have family members favoring the lighter child over the darker one and there's and like i said earlier it's this assumption that if she's and go on i see you want to say something crystal not, not only that too though but it's also um where you have families know that the lighter lighter children in the family may be perceived in the community better than others. You know, because I've been told by some of my family members, older family members, they're gonna favor you more. You know, not that my family necessarily did, but when you get out there in the world and when you get into, you know, working and things like that, and you get out in the world, they're gonna favor you. And so you, you, you gotta remember that, remember where you come from, Remember who you are, but remember that they're going to favor you. So therefore, when you get out there, keep that in mind because and so that is, is pressure because you feel like you also you got to be real to who you are. But you know that the perception in the community is 
I'm lighter skin, so I might get favored more than the, mm -hmm. the next person. So not so much that families treat you different too, but that they kind of prep you for this is what it's going to be when you get out there. Mm. Toy, can I ask a question? That this is this is because you said that you were going to change some ladies out in a minute, and so before you do that, I do want to know how how did those experiences shape who you guys are today? Like, how do you show up, and how did that influence or impact that in any way? Angie, I'm going to let you go first because you're going to be swapped out soon. So go ahead and. <laughs> um, I would say it made me. Uh, confident in myself and I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be me. Um, people are going to know who I am because of what I do, how I treat them. It's not going to have anything to do with how I look and definitely how I present myself as a person, but not my outer look. They're going to feel my inner being, like I'm being genuine, I'm being pure with you. Um, and it's also helped me to not judge people by how they look because that's an assumption because it was done to me so much, I definitely try not to do it with other people. Okay. Angie, I want to thank you before everybody else starts, since she said hers. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you can't watch us via Facebook, but you can go to Relationship Entertainment Television on YouTube and finish watching the rest of the show. So thank you, Angie. We're going to have her switch places with Lauren. We're going to have Lauren come on in a minute. Goodbye, beautiful Angie. Bye. I love your skin, Angie. So Crystal, did you want to answer? Do you want to answer next? Yeah, I think for me, um, there's a bit of anxiety that comes with it also. Um, because you want to make sure you remain true to who you are. Um, but there, there's some anxiety with that because I know that, you know, I know that I may be invited to the table because of how I look. And, you know, sometimes when I'm in certain arenas, they say, well, why does this happen with black people? Can you give us some insight? And it's like, well, I don't speak for all black people. I don't know them all. Right. I don't know them all. So, you know, there's some anxiety with that because you know that, okay, I may have gotten to this table this particular way and I have a responsibility then to do what it is that I can do to be true to who I am. So there's some anxiety with that, but then it also makes you, well, for me, it's made me more so also want to make sure that I'm on top of my game because I don't want to be looked at, you know, I, I in what I do, I make sure that I go the extra mile and I go extra hard because I want to be known for the work that I do and the hard work that I put in, not so much, oh, she just, you just there because you, and I've had people tell me this in the professional arena, well, you know, they like you. Well, you know, you there because they like, they like you, you look like them, you know, those types of things. And so it can Which be- Which is really dismissive. Oh yeah. Dismissive. And and you're like, wow, well, what about the fact that, you know, I work very hard, I'm very skilled in what I do. I, you know, I, I you know, those types of things. Um, you know, but then not taking away from the fact that that perception has been in our community and you know it may necessarily it, it could possibly be true that that is the reason why i'm sitting at this table so i can't completely you know disregard that well, there's some anxiety with that in my person and what industry are you in so i'm in uh social services for the state and i have contracts that i negotiate with the state and you know i have been told from people in my own community well you you've gotten so far because of who you what you look like that's interesting. Uh, the reason why I wanted to know what industry you're in is because I would imagine that that would be prevalent in like mm -hmm. the beauty industry or I, oh, I no. have a, a friend who's in uh, the sales industry and she has mentioned about some of the outer appearance things that impact her being able to do business and sales. But even in social services, you're seeing that. Oh, That's yeah. And and I've had it from other. Um, it, what What's so disheartening is that it mostly comes from well, it, it comes from people in my own community that feel like, you know, that maybe maybe in competition with the work that, you know, doing the same thing that I do. And um, they would say, well, you're only there, Crystal, because they because what you look like, you know, they like you. And it's like, oh, really? It's not because I got a bomb program that you don't know nothing about clearly um, for you to even make that comment. But OK, so, you know. It, it's for me, it, it can be some anxiety with it. Definitely. 
Tanya, I'm going to go ahead and have you answer that because we're going to get ready for our second crew to come in. Um, for me, I think it has been, it's made me more uplifting to women. Um, it's not uncommon for me to tell another woman that she's beautiful, um, all shades, because I know that they don't hear it all the time. And my mother raised us to be that way because we had all shades in our family. So for me, it's more about uplifting. Um, and I think for me, it's a little different because I'm in the middle as being, you know, labeled as a brown skin uh, woman. So, you know, there were certain things I just didn't experience. So for me, it's just like, listen, you're beautiful. If you're beautiful and it, it shines from the inside, you're beautiful. It doesn't matter about color. And I make sure that people know that. That's great. Fantastic. Tanya and Crystal, hold on, let me see. Ooh, we, we just, oh, first of all, let me tell y'all this. We're so happy to have Lauren, but we're gonna have to have Martina, Miss Parker, give us a give us a talk about her experience. Uh, quickly, Lauren, thank you for joining us. We want to give you a proper Hello. 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 to have you. While we're waiting, because we'll do some switching out. I'm talking to the owner of RETV again. Those of you, if you have just tuned in, please like and share. Hey, I'm going to do a, grill com a little commercial break here. And I always feel like my grandmother when I do this. This is a private owned network. And this gentleman and his wife is trying to build a platform where especially a lot of us, people of color, can go to a network and receive some information that is going to enlighten us, is going to educate us. That's important. The only reason why I've been able to do these shows for the past six weeks is because of RETV. Now, we're not taking up an offering, but we are asking you all, really, because I, the truth of the matter is, let me just go ahead and pause right there. A number of you are watching this because your friend is on. Some of you have never been here, but you want to support your friend. Okay. I think that's fine. Huh? That's, that's okay. okay. What, what, I, I didn't hear you. I said that's fine. If that's what got them here, that's fine. But here's the thing. We didn't, there was no fee. And we will support people that don't even know us. So if you're on here supporting all of the ladies that you're going to see on here, all we're asking you to do is to like RETV on Facebook. Follow them on Instagram, Relationship Entertainment Television. And they are also on YouTube. Now, it, they should have some information, you know, on the ticker. Um, but please, please like, please share this. This is some great information because this is a very important conversation because it keeps repeating itself with our community. We are it's something we're not doing enough of, and maybe it's just the exposure of it. And really, this too call people out as soon as they say something outlandish. If you hear somebody talk about, you know, somebody's skin complexion in a negative way or she only got that position because she liked. If you hear it, you need to challenge that person with that nonsense. Um, I really want to thank Crystal and Tanya um, for joining us. We are going to have um, Karima to come on for Tanya. And I think, let me see, who else we have? Okay. Karima to come on for Kaya, and then Crystal, uh, I believe you can, you can still stay on for um, Crystal, we're going to have you go off and have Gina come on because she's waiting as well, but thank you, Crystal. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank Bye. you. Stephanie, you're you. Are beautiful. How are you? Thank you, Crystal. Bye-bye. Okay, so I said we wanted to have Tina weigh in. <laughs> Tina? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We want to hear from you. From your your childhood. I know the last time we did, I think we did the weight and beauty mm. segment. And I remember seeing one of your comments. You said you were told that you were pretty for a dark girl. Mm -hmm. That's basically my childhood. Um, which perspective you on? How you want it, Toya? We want real. We like. Uh, I have. I come from a huge family, um, and I often tease my lighter skinned cousins uh, 
they call the darker ones the big booty and the lighter ones the top heavy ones. And we, we tease each other because we grew up together. But the the torment came from my grandmother's side, the women on her side. Uh, my grandmother is my complexion. I know more of Keonta's complexion because I was darker than my grandmother. My grandfather is blue black. Uh, growing up in a very healthy loving family, my my grandmother's kids, my grandfather's kids, they always we always affirmed each other. That was never an issue. I never had an identity issue growing up in my immediate family. But when some other family members of the lighter skin tone will come over, uh, one, they were shocked that I was doing well in school. Two, they will always compare me to my favorite cousin who was kind of like my sister, Trisha, because um, we're the same age. And they would say, oh, look at Trisha, she's so cute. And then they would go, look, Tina, you cute too to be dog. And I'd be like, so, the, and I would hear this all the time. And so I'm in high school now and I'm ready to tell my grandmother, sisters how I really feel. And being the gospel woman she is and that she raised us to be, she snatched me up real quick and was like, don't let it, don't do it. You know, just that whole talk down. Like, Tina, you don't even need to feed into that. You know who you are. You know that you're beautiful. You know that you're this. I've never had anyone else say that to me, except for that side of the family. And it was always the women. Uh, the men in my family have always told us how beautiful we were. You know, little Tina, you this, you're going to be all right. I just never experienced that. And it took my grandmother to sit me down and tell me, yeah, I am the darkest of all my brothers and sisters. Um, she raised a lot of them. And then I said, well, why are we so dark? And they're like, light, light. Um, Hi, Lauren, I love you. They're Lauren light. And she was go, because I had a separate father. I'm the only one that wasn't born from that marriage, even though they, she raised all of them. So that was an issue for me growing up because it affected the relationship. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't in a rush to go to funerals. Um, it made me feel some type of way. I had kind of had a still heart towards them, but I know I love them because they were my grandmother's sisters. Uh, she would, and my grandmother would, oh, she would rub it in. <laughs> she was like, you was raised better than that. And I had to look at her strength to really um, understand the depth of love I had to give. Like, I don't have to like you, but I have to love you. Um, and Kianta hit it on point. She said, beauty is not what you see. It's what's, it's what's within. And to yeah. me growing up, I thought they were so beautiful. This is a wig. Their hair looked like this and it was long and beautiful. And I'm like, how could they act so ugly? And I remember telling my grandmother, I said, why would you even say that to a kid? Mm -hmm. Like we had some deep conversations once I got into middle school and high school that I, I think she really did save cause she was raw with me. And I had to be raw with her and say, well, grandma, I don't like them. Mm -hmm. I don't like them. I know they're your sisters. I am going to drop auntie such and such off at home, but do I have to? I don't want to be in the car with her. <laughs> uh, none, none of them came to my graduations. None of them, people who know me know that, yes, my grandparents raised me, but I was a single mom. I did a lot of things to overcome some things. Um, they, that's why I didn't come to graduations. It's almost like they wanted to see us do well, do bad. Hmm. And and just to keep it 100, it was the darker kids. Um, but I thank God that my grandmother having the heart that she did, she always allowed everybody over. My house was always packed growing up. So even though the parents might have felt some type of way, us as cousins, it didn't phase us. It didn't Do you think us. that that kind of pushed you, though, to be such an overachiever to prove that side of your family wrong? Yeah. Yeah, because I always have my grandparents in my ear. Um, it it was an it was it was a natural push. Like, how could they even say that? Like, you blaming us because your son is on drugs? Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they can't hang with us because you think we're bad people. But y'all over here eating, sleeping, looking at my granddaddy who's blue, black, purple. So that was another issue. Like, they didn't like the they didn't care for the darker skinned women, but. I know you care for the darker skinned men. So just going, growing up with that in the back of my head and just having to deal with it. And my grandma telling me, Tim, you better, you gotta pray for him. You gotta pray for him. And I'm like, why? <laughs> let, let, me, let me say this, you guys. I, and I love that we have some gentlemen watching with us, but Duran wrote a moment ago, self-hate was perpetuated in movies. 
-hmm. the stigma of what movies betrayed, portrayed rather of light skinned women made the stereotype. The yeah. movie Pinky, now I'm not familiar with that, but I am familiar with an imitation of life pushed the narrative mm -hmm. when it comes you know, to us. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen Imitation of Life, but the young girl was going majority of her life passing as a white woman, although she was biracial. Mm -hmm. and so we know that we don't own studio, you know, we're not, we didn't own studios at that time. So that's what was projected. And I believe again, and I, you guys know, I just go back to slavery. That's what we were told. I mean, you, you, the classes were set thin and we kept it going. We've kept it going. Because if you were lighter, oh, you get to work in the house. You ain't gonna be out in that sun cooking. So that builds resentment in the group. And we still have it. I'm 40 years old and I can walk in the room. And I, I, I say this often, women still, you can still feel that the size up. And that is something like Crystal said earlier, like, well, is she cool? Like people, and I, I actually heard this two years ago. A friend of mine told me that someone was like, oh, I, I didn't think she would be that cool. Hmm. And I and I, that always puzzles me because I'm like, I'm a human being. Why do I, and I thought as a little girl, and hey, Kareem, we're going to give you a, a, a proper welcome as well. Thank you for coming on. I, when I was a younger girl, I felt that I had to overcompensate to really show people now, naturally, I'm nice. Like when I was younger, I like to say I was real nice, but now that I'm older, I'm nice. I took the real off. I'm just nice. Because when I was younger, I felt that I needed to let people know, like, no, I'm okay. Like, I'm cool. And even in me trying to do that, people still assume that I would, I had been able, you know, stuck up and all that. I'm like, I don't understand how they can get that. Like, I've seen some uppity, dark skin folks. This oh, isn't just based on, you know what I'm saying? On the, your complexion, we talked about that before uh, when we did the show Wave and Beauty, how just like there's something that you shouldn't be feel confident because you're you're big, mm. because you're tall. It it just has to stop. Well, here's the other elephant in the room. Well, I don't know if it's an elephant or not. Could be a tiger. I don't know. But the other thing in the room is that older black women and and they may not like this, and, and I've always been the one to, to push back against uh, older black women too, uh, but we didn't do it. They didn't do it right. Mm. I'm older compared to you all, but the, the, I'm talking about like my mother's age, my grandmother's, my grandmother's sisters, like they didn't always get it right, those older generations. And it's unfortunate that some of the beliefs that, that they had cause some of the issues that we have and that we experience. And I don't think they get to get let off the hook. Mm -hmm. However, they only, they only taught us what they knew. Right. Mm -hmm. They only gave us the information that they had access to. And so with knowing that it's like, you can't really be mad or hold on to it. But at the same time, we do have to accept that some of this stuff was perpetuated through our families. It wasn't just Hollywood because before our families had TVs, they were talking look. about this colorism stuff. So I think, you know, let's let's just call that what it is too and, and, and look for opportunities to share with older generations in a respectful way. Like you said, Martina, your grandmother taught you to be, you know, very respectful and loving when you deal with folks, but you have to be willing to have those conversations with people who see things differently than you. Wow, Karima. <laughs> We know that you just got here, but we do want you to chime in and just tell us a bit about your experience. I know there's a bit of feedback, so we're gonna try to get as much conversation in with you. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's feedback. I, I turned my volume down a little bit, but in my too cute. I didn't really too have cute. the experience too much. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. Is your phone, are you watching the stream on your phone? No. no? Okay. But we're going to go ahead and try to get as much as you in as possible because we're going to respect your time. Okay. So in the household, I didn't really go through much because we were all of darker skin. But it wasn't until, you know, I started going to school and like Martina, oh, you're pretty to be dark skin. You know, well, what, what does that mean? Um, how, you know, I'm pretty or I'm not. 
I'm not pretty, you know, to be dark skinned. So I went through a lot of that um, in high school. I didn't really join any of the clubs or the groups or things because I, I felt like I couldn't relate. There were more of the, I felt like the lighter skin were getting picked. So I just kind of stayed to myself and um, dating was not common. You know, they were all dating the lighter skin. So those are a few of the experiences I had. I didn't really go through a lot with the family because a lot of us are, you know, brown skin or dark skin. Wow. And so dating for you, someone actually put a comment on earlier where they said it becomes an issue even with with us or how we treat each other as far as with dating. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Lauren, I saw the look. <laughs> the reason I gave the look is because I had someone who was interested in dating me say, well, I only mess with dark skin girl. Uh, oh. Well, then why are you bothered with me? Like, why are you in my face? That's the only reason why I did that because it was like, or I usually only date dark skin and chocolate girls. And I was like, mm. congratulations. I'm not sure where you expect this conversation to go from here, but uh, spoiler alert, it won't be at a good place. So that's the reason I did that when it comes to dating because while people have their preferences, I've heard, um, and I know you're specifically talking about dating now, but I've heard, oh, you're pretty to be light because light skinned women usually look like blah, blah, blah. Or you do have a big forehead and all light skinned women have big foreheads, but blah, 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 blah. And it's like, where do people come off? thinking that it's appropriate <laughs> to say certain things to each other because of color. Right. And when I think of my experience with color, I was listening to all the ladies and I was going, I had none of this as a child. And as a child, I went to predominantly white schools. So as a child, it was always us against them. Mm -hmm. And then when I became older, it was us against them and then us against us. Right. So I didn't have that colorism part until I became older. Right. And it got real, real, real as I became older because my family, and mind you, for our grandchildren, it's always this picture that sticks out. I was the first yellow one in our family for the grandkids. So there's this picture of all of us at that time. And it's literally like one of these things are not like the other because everybody else is brown skin. And then I'm there with like, and then my mom would be on a white dress. Like, <laughs> so it's like illuminating out. And I'm smiling like, hey, I'm with my cousins. Um, so what that did for me, because I, no one said anything to me, but it was something that I always was cognizant of that I always wanted to be darker. I didn't become okay with my skin tone until much later on in life because I always wanted to be darker because my older cousins, are you kidding me? I thought they were just so beautiful and they were so fly. And Tiff had the asymmetrical haircut and Cody had, you know, the her dress for prom. And I would just yeah. sit there and go, oh my God, they are beautiful. So I always wanted to be darker hmm. as a child. Um, but I felt like I had a good sense of self. I never heard anything until people would say, well, what are you? Mm. And it was said to me when I was a child, but it was because we know you're black because you have French braids in your hair, mm. but something's quite, it's something's <laughs> off. Like I can't, I can't quite put a name on it. But again, it was a, a racial thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when I got older, it was, what are you? Because I'm trying to size you up. Mm. And that was for my own people. And so I've had 
working with, and I know Crystal's gone, but in social services, and I was going, um, I had a job at the time where I would go to people's homes and I would get two different things. One, I had people who were my clients that were in a suburb who my name is pretty, you know, it's Lauren, it's unsuspecting. So when I would show up to their homes and I was in the mm. suburbs, they would go, oh, this wow. person didn't want to let me in her home wow. because I was black. Now, then when I would have my inner city clients and I would go, they would say little things to see if I would react or how I would react. And I am the type of person that I'm smooth until I'm not. <laughs> and so I said something to her and then she went, oh, you are black. And this was from a black woman. So that's like the scope of my experience. Goes pretty far, um, but yeah, we can talk. They, like the dating thing is just what triggered me because I've always had issues with my facial expressions. Yeah. So it was hard to hold that in. Oh no. You, you know, you're welcome to that because like we said before, again, it's the assumption of she, she'll have an attitude. Mm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. She'll have an attitude because of the, you know, the complexion of her skin. And some of, and people will think that, oh, only, you know, dark women are shunned, but lighter women are shunned as well because of the, the assumption that we're going to be a certain way where some people didn't have a bad experience with a light skin woman. And like other people, they think you had an, a bad experience with one black person. That person is spoke for the entire group. As Lori Bentley put it, pure is just ignorance. It really is. And so that's why we, again, like I said, we have to make sure that we aren't teaching our children this when we are in the company of people that are having these conversations. Like, And y'all know I'm a champion of women. When you're in a conversation with women and you hear them talking about another woman's complexion because I'm, I'm telling you we're her black so-and-so or we're her high yellow so-and-so when we start saying those types of things we're we playing right into it well a toy what what is actually true is that when we start saying those kinds of things that's our own insecurity speaking hmm. When mm. you have to identify a person like that with her black self or her this self, mm -hmm. and that's something that herself is triggering something in mm. to make you say that. And so nobody, we, you know, as women, we shouldn't be communicating with or about each other in that way. I mean, that's yeah. that's like petty. I mean, and not the cool petty. That's the petty petty. Right. Well, yes, we're getting ready to have uh, Camille join us momentarily. Our great tyrant is going to bring her in, and I'm going to do another commercial break as she come in. If you have not already done so, please use this as an opportunity to, hey, Camille, to like and share RETV. And while I'm at it, because Kianta will probably get me when we get off that I didn't tell you all to like and share Women's Champ. Thank so you. please like and oh, okay, Lauren. <laughs> like and share women's chant because we want to be able to have more conversations mm -hmm. about these issues within our community because the truth of the matter is some people may say well that's petty it may be petty to you because you didn't have that experience but for those right. of us that grew up being you know like tina being on the darker end you know, you pretty to be a dark girl and Karima hearing that as well. And for me with my complexion and because of my hair, not like simply because of the way that I look. So, Camille, you've been listening to us for the past hour. What have you heard? And welcome, welcome, welcome. What have you heard that like trigger something for you or tell us about your experience? Um, can you all hear me? I want to make sure that's perfect. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Am I looking directly in the camera? Because I really can't tell. <laughs> you are. Well, hey, here. That was off. Well, tell you, you know. that was off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to say that growing up, I didn't have that experience regarding my color. I am what they call caramel complexion. I'm in between both, but in my family, in my household, that never came up. Color never came up. Even at school, I didn't have to deal with it much. Um, I think the, coming up in the era that we did, the 80s, I heard more about hair 
that I then I heard about color. To me, I thought hair was more prevalently discussed and measured on whether you're beautiful or not, whether you had long hair, fine hair. I really heard a lot about that. So as a little girl, I always wanted my hair braided because when they braided it, they would add an extension like I have now, and it would make me feel better. Mm. Not that my family perpetuated that to me at all, but it was the community. It was, you know, the people around me outside of my house. And I'll say this, I don't think we put enough onus on men. Mm -hmm. Like men, boys perpetuated that more to me mm. than oh, girls. Definitely. But where did they learn it? Here's what this the reason I said that I believe a lot of that is at home. What they are hearing, what they are watching. And right. for those, and like I said before, for those of us that grew up, um, especially in the 80s, you didn't see darker complexion women on a commercial. You barely can get that now. I mean, I don't even watch like cable television unless you go like to BT and all of that. But if, if she was on there, she was black, you almost missed that she was black. Mm -hmm. But but here's another thing that I have noticed, not in our community, but in the white community, they value darker skin black mm -hmm. people more than light skin. If you look at white men, white men normally marry a woman who almost looks African or African. When they go black, they go black. And let me tell you why. Because if we're talking about things from slavery, yeah. we only look at it from our yeah. point of view. Look at there. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to yeah. sneak. Mind you, I would have been in the house just to have children. Mm -hmm. but I would have been really... in the house because I would have broken the damn house. Okay. Look, but they would have really preferred. Wait, wait, wait. Can we get something clear, ladies? The folks that were in the house were in the house because usually they were more closely related to the Gee. masters, which is why they had they were so light. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's the and they, they also they had air conditioning. But the person that they <laughs> would have chosen <laughs> would have been everybody else. Tina lost it. <laughs> I knew it. I was waiting. I Tina, you did well. You lost a long time. <sighs> I'm done. Yeah, they were, they were connected. Usually they were it's okay, I'm done. the slave <laughs> So yes, no, but you I, did have air conditioning though, in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I and I think to that point, you know, we as we as a community, we don't understand the depth of the trauma that is being caused mm -hmm. by skin color and the and, and how we measure, how we relate, how we engage with each other. It has it it's really it's really it can be really damaging. It can be really damaging. Before and we people will not like Karina said, people will not get themselves involved in things because of the perception that they have accepted from other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, but here's the thing, and, and I know we're gonna have to get ready to do a switch in a moment, but, and I'm sorry, Camille, it was a bit of a delay, so I didn't want it to seem like I was cutting you off. But again, it's, it's both ways, where you stump, I experienced stepping back, because I was being talked about not only by students, but by adults in the school. You know what I'm saying? So we, Man, this runs, you know, this runs really deep. I know that we had another comment, but I want to thank Kiantha and Martina for coming on and Karima, because we're getting ready to do a switch. We have Anna, Toshiba, and Jenna getting ready to come on with us. But I want to thank you all for your time. Don't leave us. Still make some comments and stay in the conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, thank pretty you. girls. Bye, Bye ladies. pretty girls. See you later. Bye, <laughs> That was that was wonderful. Hey, ladies. Hi, Anna. Hey, honey boots. How are you? I am doing okay and listening to this interesting conversation. Okay. Hi, you know, I got a lot of comments. Okay. Hi, Tashiva. 
Can you can you hear me? Sheba, say something so I know that we can. Okay, there you go. And then, Kianta, we got to have you um, gracefully um, go out so we can have Jenna come in to join us as well. And then we'll Hello, get- Hello, ladies. Can you hear me okay? I can. Hi, Tashiba. <laughs> And we just want to make sure that everyone is logging in. If you have Jenna, if you're watching it on, uh, if you have like your phone nearby, make sure that your volume is your volume is down so that we don't receive any feedback. But I want everybody to know that's joining us now. So part of the reason why we are having this conversation today is because Anna and I were in a conversation a few weeks ago, and she was talking about how her daughter is of a lighter hue and she felt like if she said look at my red bone she would have basically been crucified because and she said that there is the you know that contradiction a double standard yes the double standard because you a darker woman can say my melanin is popping but for those that are lighter to say that you're you know look at my light skin you don't hear that you hear darker skin being celebrated but you don't I, i've never seen it and if anybody else on here has seen it let me know but i have not seen that so anna you want to expound and even uh, expound on that and then even talk about your experience yeah how- so i'm just going to give a little background on where that conversation came from and i can speak from being like the biracial side um i am half black and i'm half italian um a lot of people don't know my background is with my italian side because of me being black it's not it was not accepted i couldn't celebrate being black on that side and with me being the light skin as what they say the quote unquote good hair and my mother's side i really couldn't celebrate, you know, felt like I could openly celebrate being light and having a different type of texture hair without feeling like I'm being offensive to the darker tones in the community. Like you said, I really didn't realize it until I had my own daughter and I see so many of the darky who's being able to celebrate their daughters and they'll say my chocolate drops my melon is popping and people are like yeah you know that melon is popping which rightfully they should they should be able to celebrate but if i was to go on there and say look at my red bone daughter her melon is popping i feel like i would be vilified Mm. can i say something yes you mean your daughter has melanin because I was told that I couldn't wear a melanin shirt because I don't have any. Correct. You see what I'm saying, Lauren? That is exactly like the kind of, <laughs> of, of underlying thing I think is not talked about. I think we champion that, yes, in a black community, we have all hues. We have from light to dark. But also, I think sometimes it's like unsaid to say you can celebrate you in this community, but not too much. Mm. Oh, okay. I hear you. I may I speak for a second? Can I jump in there, guys? Mm-hmm. I found that very interesting because I was born in '79, and just like the young lady said, who left, I'm not sure what her name was. My experience has mostly been about the hair textures, but usually, um, I'm brown. Uh, I. I never knew that people that were a lighter skin brown had that feeling or felt that way because usually from my conversations I've heard and seen, it's always been that the lighter skinned was of the best cookies or the most beautiful. Um, I never thought to hear a sister that said that they were lighter skinned and they were having those type of controversies or those issues. So it was very, that was a wow factor for me to hear you say that. And when you're talking about hair, um, I 
wear my hair natural. And I went natural maybe a few years ago. And when I went natural, somebody said, oh, you do have N-word hair. And it, it blew my mind. First of all, what blows my mind is that audacity is at an all-time high with people. And they, that they felt comfortable to say something like that. But hair does matter because they assumed because of my complexion that my hair should be a certain texture. And those two don't always correlate, but it's blowing my mind that in 2020, people of our own culture are still having hard time, a hard time um, accepting that we are all shades, but we'll, it's almost the same thing as I can talk about my sister, but you better not say anything because we can all, if someone of a different culture says something about black people, we will be up in arms. We will go off. We will have hashtags. We will do all of this stuff trying to say how we are unified and together. But with each other, we have this hierarchy, which makes absolute no, it just, it's ridiculous. So my question, I was just always wondering, so how do we detect such a, um, we're talking about years and years of things and there's layers, there's textures. We can talk about a cultural standpoint. We can talk about the race. We can talk about a confidence standpoint. How do we detox that type of thing? Well, um, I think it's, uh, go ahead, Camille. I think it starts with conversations like these, but on a much broader scale. I think it starts with in our homes, and I also think it should start with actual curriculum in school, because that's where you get the most um, highly concentrated population of children, where you can really shape the way they think and how they see themselves. I think uh, on another thing is too, um, whenever my sister pops back on, I'm not sure what's going on with her. Uh, my mom is of a very darker tone. so. As you can see, me and my sister, we're both biracial, uh, but my mother's a very darker tone. And uh, Toya wanted her on here tonight, but unfortunately she wasn't able to um, get on. Uh, I think that had a very good effect as well because I got to see um, her experience and how she felt um, being of a darker tone. Um, she would tell us, you know, what her experience was growing up. But then I got to balance it and she got to see our experience as being a lighter tone. Some things that she thought that we wouldn't experience because we were light uh, that she experienced because she was dark. We didn't experience that per se, but we had our own experiences from being a lighter hue. So I think that helped us, at least for me in the household, balance that of being able to see both sides of the spectrum of how darker skin tones feel and, and what can be offensive. And for us, she got to see our uh, way. And you I'm sorry, have? I had um, some connection issues there for a moment. So Toshiba, I hate that I didn't get a chance to hear that. But Anna, I don't know. I know I don't know if you can go a little deeper, but did you get a chance to tell them like what your mom was called? And well, you know, my mom, she's very um, honest about it. Um, she felt like, like most of the other ones, you know, she felt like she would hear, oh, you're dark. And you got to figure, though, my mom, like she said, is is in ages that was in school that we were in way different times. So for her, she, she had the, oh, you're dark. She felt like just like, I'm sorry, I don't remember the other lady's name, but I identified with that because she did feel like the black men didn't want to date her. They wanted the lighter um, complected women. The men who would date her would be the uh, other cultures, the white men, the Italian men, the Hispanic men, the black men wanted the lighter hues. Um, so for that, it just kind of, it, it kind of just, for me, I was able to see that full circle because of that, with how it, you know, goes from back and forth. And she always felt like that made her feel not pretty. 
she necessarily didn't set out to have biracial children, but when she did, she felt like, oh, my daughters won't have to go through what I went through. And it's like, yeah, I didn't have to go through saying, oh yeah, you're dark, but I had to go through, oh, she's light, she's mixed with something. Like you said, she has the good hair. Is she stuck up? Is she conceited? Is she gonna be a nice person? You know, it's like, you have to prove yourself before you're accepted. Wow, let me ask you all this. There's a question from Lauren, one of our viewers, and she said, how do we begin to dispel this and celebrate all shades? I think it's gonna be like Camille said. Anybody can answer that, yeah, anybody can answer. I'm sorry that. Can you repeat that question? How do we begin to dispel? Um, and let me make sure I go back to the to her actual question because I lost it on here. Um, but basically, how how where do we start? Like, and I and I believe I think Bridget put in there like that starts at home. Truly, I believe that because I just still believe a lot of these children like that. You're told that you're beautiful or you're a great person by the people like you would think that that would start at home but how do we begin to dispel this and celebrate all shades how can we as we can start with the group here and those that are watching how do we begin to celebrate all shades i think it does go back to what camille said a curriculum would be great because mm. black people are um more than just a month and maybe you get extra posters in the hallway or extra books in the library about who we are. But if it was a curriculum that was put in when children elementary school, not middle, because a lot of things people don't think children can handle, but elementary schools, when you realize that you're different and who you are and a lot of the colors, like my son is in elementary school and he said, how am, how are you white and I'm black? So I have to have numerous conversations with him. And I thought he got it and he didn't. And he came back months later was like, so you mean to tell me you're black? And this is how he talks. You mean to tell me. So I'm pulling out pictures of people to, like explaining that we're all on a, um, a spectrum and all of that, but we need our people to come and teach children yeah. that and then what we can identify the reason why i say our people is for numerous reasons but one especially if i see someone looking like me and if they have a hair texture that i identify with that maybe was shunned or if they have a skin color that is similar to mine that maybe was shunned not only is it introducing the fact that you're beautiful anyway and there are other people like you and there's a connection there but at the same time it's just letting you you're not in it by yourself and kids need to know that very early that you're not in this by yourself yes that is that is certainly important Toshiba, you're one of our beautiful coco sisters what has been your experience because i believe here's the thing now you and i had a conversation the other week and one of the reasons why i wanted you to come on is because you have been labeled what they've labeled quite a few light-skinned women as conceited because of the way you simply carry yourself oh okay. and people never taking the time to get to know you she was surprised because i told her my first impression of her i met toshiba in college can't believe it's 1998 but i never got that vibe from you Toshiba my vibe of Toshiba was man I admired her confidence and she was surprised that I said that because she's always heard the contrary wow <laughs> well that is true so my experience I went to school with all beautiful brown children I've been around beautiful brown people um, I have not had those experiences but I have had issues with, from elementary school through college where people thought I was some of everything as far as 
for the child of God using words and I could not figure it out. They never got the opportunity to get a chance to know me, but it was all, um, I guess, stereotypical things. Like if I walked upright or if I enunciated a word, it was like, oh, she's a, she's stuck up or she, she's from the North and I went to school in the South. Um, things like that. That's what I have always experienced. So when I had gone back to homecoming, I was telling Toya, um, and I had so many people that had never come in contact with me the four years I was there. And they were saying so many positive things. And I was like, oh my God, I needed this experience. Like I never knew people saw me in that light. Um, it really made me feel good. It brought tears to my eyes because I thought too, like, what am I doing to put off that type of energy? Um, I didn't know if it was a particular way I walked or did I say something to offend someone. So that has always been an insecurity with me. Um, the people who know me know they see a totally different side. Um, and that was something that I could never understand. You know, let me just say this as well, because I know that we're talking about our textures and I, and I, I for the life of me, I don't, I was trying to do some history, some reading, and maybe one of our viewers is more versed in this than I am, but even where the term nappy came from. Now, let me tell you all this, um, for those that are watching, my ex-husband is on the darker side. I'm on the other side. And so we have a rainbow of complexions with our five children. And with that comes five different textures of hair. So, and, and the, the reason why I said we have to be very careful when we hear something that's off kilter, we have to educate people immediately. You don't have to, you know, pop off, but you can, you know, kindly educate someone and let them know what isn't okay. So we were at the doctor's office and uh, it was the Caucasian doctor, sweet as pie, but I took my two younger sons to the doctor. My son, Jordan, has what people will call, you know, the more fine textured, curly i'm doing this good hair right so when he got on this and, and my son kevin has a different texture it's a little tighter so the doctor um when jordan got on the table she said oh you have really nice hair and so when kevin got on and they were much younger i could see the look on his face because he might have been about six or seven waiting for her to compliment him and it did not happen. And as a mother who does not play any games, and if you know anything about me, you know I don't play when it comes to people of color to begin with. I never train my children to be told that they have good hair or bad hair. We don't even have that discussion. That was never something that they grew up with. It was go brush your hair, go comb your hair. Your, your hair is hair. So when they, I asked my sons at the end of the visit, I said, please step out. I had to politely educate that doctor. I said, I know that you probably didn't mean any harm. And she looked awfully bewildered. I said, but we already have enough issues in our community when it comes to hair. My children just have hair. Nobody, everybody in the house have good hair, but I don't go around saying your hair is good or your hair is bad. But I had to let her know, you cannot make those comparisons in this period, and especially not in my face, with my children. So I had to say something to her about that. And she was on the out front receptive. But what I'm saying is that when we hear that, you got to check that. I'm sorry, you have to check that in right away. Because that's, you know, that that's a lesson. That's a teachable moment. And I don't know if you both are, are I don't know, both of you, your volumes are are on. I think we lost Camille. I don't know what happened there. But I just want, you know, I want to say that like that is so important. But let me say this. I think that we as women, because I'm gonna just go back to women. Sometimes we're taught to not trust each other, period. And it doesn't always have to deal with the fact that um, you're of a light, like, look, both of you both, both of you are on different ends. And for Toshiba, for you to have that experience and Lauren, for you to have that experience. And I'm sorry, y'all, I don't know if there's something wrong with my connection, but I can't hear. Uh, I can hear Anna. Um, 
Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. I had to go on and come back in. Okay. okay, it's fine. But I just wanted to say that it's important for us to have these teachable moments when you, I, and you don't just do it when it's the other, you do it with everybody. If somebody right. with, with, within our group does that, you got to educate them as well. Like, we have to stop saying that. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Anna, were you about to say something, dear? Um, I was just going to say before uh, Camille got off, I think Camille is right. I think we need more of these platforms where we do feel open and honest in our communities to have these conversations. Um, like she said before, you know, I had no idea. I, never, I didn't think about it in this perspective. I didn't think about it in that perspective. Um, I go back to, like we were saying, what we say within our communities, because like they say, you know, oh, you look uh, pretty to be a dark girl. But then in that same sense, you will see a dark girl say just because she's light doesn't mean she's pretty. So we all yeah. have to take an account of what we say within our communities. Uh, we have to take into account our own double standards within our communities. But at the same time, I do feel that, you know, when you are of a lighter skin hue, you do have to educate yourself and know the stigma that is within the community. So you not you're not offensive. But I just think they still our community still has to be open enough for all of us to be celebrated equally within the community. Yes, and I, I agree. You're back. And with that switching. Is and you're back, Camille. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lauren. I agree with what Anna just said. And with that, what are we doing on the ground level? Because having these platforms is beautiful. And you have people, it's really just a kickstart. It's not an end all. So what will happen is people will watch it and they'll comment and they'll just keep hitting the hearts and they'll like and then they won't correct any of their own behavior and or the behavior of others around them. Mm. Like it's little things that people sometimes we we have to learn not to be so defensive because sometimes things are said completely out of ignorance. Yes. Now it's a different ball game if it's willful ignorance. That's that's that gives a different response. But out of ignorance, that is a wonderful time to educate. And some people will say, it's not my job to educate another adult. It's not my job to educate white people. It's not my job. Wait a minute. Let me challenge that. Can I challenge that? Of course. Yes, it is. Because uh -huh. those same people, have, this is why we are having this conversation tonight. Because they taught okay we going back to we going back to the 1700s again yep it was taught then before then okay y'all 1400s because you are dark you are less than so we mm -hmm. already have to fight the world and, and excuse me if i get emotional about this i already have to fight the world i don't want to fight my own people correct that's tough yeah and so and the thing is I'm over because of the way I look. Let me tell you something. I have to grow up because because I am who I am and I say what I mean and I mean what I say, it will be misinterpreted as I'm angry. I have had a Caucasian manager tell me that I was that word that rhymes with which and for the sake of RETV, I won't, even, I won't say it. But because I stood up, I'm not going to talk about people behind their back. I'm going to address the elephant in the room or state what every what's the obvious. I was labeled as, oh, you are so and so and so and so. Because I spoke up, we have to speak up. And if someone is offended, oh, well, yep. They're going to have to get with the program. But I do get them because I hate that my I, my connection was lost. I missed a piece about Camille saying the uh, I was trying to catch up to you all as far as getting it in the schools. Like Lauren, like you said, we have to start there because any and everything is being taught to our children. That's another conversation <laughs> that we would have to have. But we have to set some things in order. Like you said, 
we they're not going to voluntarily just give us this information we would have to fight to have this t type of curriculum in the schools for our children but it starts at home i am going to say that it definitely starts at home camille did you want to say something because i know you had to step out I, I think that another conversation and maybe this is for another show mm -hmm. another conversation that has to be had is why do we so for example the the, the business that i have it teaches self-esteem it teaches um inner beauty because my company works from the inside out but when you present that to let's say black principal they don't want to hear it now if a white person came in with the curriculum similar to mine they would be more apt to open their doors to them i've had black principals who are women when as soon as i walked in the door i could see immediately Oh, I won't get this contract because she's intimidated. And I haven't even opened my mouth. Right. So how can we as a community work together if we in the community are fighting against each other? Yeah. Yeah. And we and it it starts there. That is another conversation because I definitely want to respect yeah. all of Camille, that's that uh I want you to do good, but not better than me first. That's and that's that conversation. A bargain. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It, it is. It, it really is. And so I want to challenge all of us. Um, for those of you, thank you that have hung in there with us this entire time. Man, we got we have to challenge ourselves to do better, to think better, to live better. And I was reading some of your comments. It, it we can also look, we can also do this in love. And I'm gonna tell you this: I don't care if you did it in sign language or you whispered it. Some people are gonna be offended anyway, because you're saying something that they don't want to hear. And that's not our problem. But speak it anyway. I'm serious. I did a video on speak up. We have to speak up because I yeah. actually had that happen. Someone of a different culture, cult, different group touching this child hair and asking, well, I wonder if he's mixed to suggest that the only reason why this boy had this texture of hair is because he was mixed. And I, and I was sitting there, I said, Lord, I know you don't have me sitting here during this con during this whole conversation and you are picking in this child's hair. I had to say something and you know, yeah. I did. And so that's what I'm saying. When we hear it, what they say, see something, say something. Mm -hmm. You hear something, say something. I want to challenge us all with that. But before you ladies get off, um, I am making it uh, my business to get everyone to talk about what they're grateful for. Right now, before we go off, we'll start with Toshiba and then Lauren, and then we'll end with you, Camille. Please tell us, what are you grateful for? Oh, I'm grateful for so many things. Um, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for the amazing friends that I have. I'm grateful to be on this platform with all of these beautiful ladies and just growing wisdom and knowledge each day. Um, I'm grateful for having a shelter and everyone being well. Um, I can go on and on. I'll stop and digress. but. <laughs> Lauren, I am grateful for being a black woman. Um, now, since we all have been in the house, I've been seeing how our people are so creative and so talented and people are shining more and letting their lights shine yeah. and their talent shine. And it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. And I'm also grateful that I'm able to have these conversations and hear different perspectives and understand and respect them because that is not something everyone can do. Mm. Yes. Awesome. Uh, I know for me right now, I'll just say one thing I'm grateful for is time um, because with everything that's going on and I'm, I'm realizing more and more time is, is a very, very hot and high commodity. We don't know if we're going to get another second, another minute, another hour. So I'm grateful for every moment that God gives me to walk in purpose, to give me the chance to correct things that I've needed to correct. 
you know, so I'm grateful for time. Wow. And Anna, and I see Tanya is back on. Hey, Tanya. I didn't even know I had to do it. That's okay. You know what? I'm on. Hey, sis. <laughs> no, I am grateful for for life, seriously, and the journey that I've been through. Um, I'm grateful for family, great friends, um, all you beautiful ladies. I'm, I'm happy to be connected to you all. Um, and just support, period. And just and my walk with God. Like, I've, I've grown. That's what I was going to say. Everything, yeah, right. trumps everything for me. So, um, I, I'm like truly happy to be here. And when I say here, it's where I'm at in life, it's my confidence level and where I'm walking and where I'm going. I'm just grateful for like that you keep seeing all on social media that, you know, during this unprecedented time that we have never encountered before, I have lacked nothing. So that's why I'm with you, Tanya. I am grateful for my relationship. Uh, of course, we all still have our anxiety we all still have our fears, but um, in the midst of it all, I just think this time, and I I think more people have taken this time to really look at themselves and try to reflect and hopefully build a, a relationship with a higher power. Um, for me, it's God, uh, whatever you want, you know, we'll just leave it at that. I don't need any uh, Twitter trolling thugs, keyboard thugs, um, we'll just, you know, whatever you believe, I just hope that you took this time to really get in tune with that and to uh, give yourself a, a, a better platform of, of yourself. And again, I thank God because I, I lack nothing. Wow. I, you know, let me say this before I say what I was going to say. Uh, going to say, I, we have a couple of. If I can get my mouse to work correctly here. Um, a couple of people that said what they were grateful for, and I just want to read, read theirs, but Tiffany wrote, I'm grateful for not only setting new boundaries, but enforcing them even through the pain of unfamiliarity of said boundaries, because too long I didn't have boundaries, even with family. And Tiffany, I must say, honey, I agree with you, because I realize that sometimes we can overextend ourselves to people, and I had a hard lesson on that the other week. When you say that you're available for a certain time, stick with it. Because when you try to start accommodating people, that's when you're gonna have a problem. Stick with your no. Let no be no and let yes be yes. Um, Kiantha wrote, I'm grateful that no matter the experiences you all have had, y'all are some dope, beautiful, and compassionate black women. So I'm gonna tell everybody that's watching and I know some people had to leave us, but I kind of figured that this conversation would go a little longer just because of the sensitivity of it, because we have a ways to go. So I want to say that I'm grateful for the opportunity to be pushed out of my comfort zone and that, and I'm going to keep pushing RETV until he they get over a thousand likes because there, I know the last time I looked, it was over 600, but please, don't get all of this great information and not share. We will share information with people. And that's why I said that on the onset. We will share other people's content. They don't know anything about you. And the people that we see often that we're, you know, really, some people, some of you are watching your friends like and share RETV on Facebook, relationship entertainment, uh, television on YouTube as well as Instagram. So again, I just want to tell you all that I'm grateful. Like as I was preparing for this particular show and when I looked at the flyer that I created you all, like I'm grateful that I'm telling you I've been completely pushed out of my comfort zone. Like me doing a flyer, like what's going on? It'd take me three hours to do something that somebody could probably do in 40 minutes. But as I was looking at all of you and it's, you know, it is what it is. I just happen to know beautiful women aesthetically. You all are just beautiful, gorgeous women, but it's more of the inside, as Tweety talked about earlier. Like, and that's something I've always pushed because I told my daughter that I don't care how cute you think you are, attitude is everything. That's what's key. So I'm grateful that I I want every woman to know that's watching 
that follows me that I that I personally know, I'm grateful for all of you because some women don't have this type of support and I'm not going to take it lightly. So as we tell everyone else goodbye, I want you all to hold tight because we want to end it properly and you will see that we'll be ending the live. But let me tell you about the show next week. So in that next week will be seven weeks for me. So I'm going to have a season, a season finale. And the topic of that show will be why do men sabotage good relationships? So I do hope that you all tune back in next week. And if there are some men watching, it's not us to bash men, but there are going to be some gentlemen on the show as well to join us. So from me and to everyone else, thank you all for tuning in and watching and liking and sharing. I really hope that you all have a wonderful night. You ladies just hold tight for a second. <laughs>